The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. This is the uh, Thursday edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour and uh, it's the 8th of uh, February. We're looking at the Dow up 19 at 38,696. Now this is going to be really important. There have been so many charts that have this little double top type thing. It could be a double top from weeks ago, months ago, years ago. But these double tops have stalled a lot of the rallies and the stocks that have been the strongest have been the ones or the indexes that have stalled for a moment and then powered higher, a very sharp move up to a, a new either recovery high and in many cases all-time high. What we are looking at is that with two sessions to go, Thursday and Friday, we've got two days in which – to break above the 38,783. Now, I wasn't going to do that, but if I can find all my information right here, I can do this. So in the Chapman methodology, click here. That's not the one. There it is. Um, it's a very simple technique. What we're looking at is I have to move this over and I have to move the screen. I'm using just one screen today. So in the Chapman wave. <clears throat> Try to identify the lowest low bar and then merely count each successively higher peak. Peak A, straight line. In this case, I'm just showing it as a graph. Pulls back. The moment you make a, high, um, a lower high of that particular rally by one penny, that becomes a peak. That's on a closing basis, whatever. If you're looking at a daily chart, that's a daily. If it's one minute, it's a one minute. Now, in this case, that's called a floating letter. It pulls back as long as all these moves up. Don't take out that original starting point, the actual to the penny low. This becomes a buy signal that can evolve into an upgrade into a buy mode. That buy mode says that if it goes to usually a B, that there should be at least four higher peaks. Why is that important? Because a buy mode in this particular methodology suggests – that you can go to peak A first, peak B, then peak C, then peak D. And D, other things can happen. But also at D, if you have those three bars, within three bars of that high of D, it goes to a higher high by even one penny. That could become a Chapman Wave instant restart. It's the only technique that you have that has this particular, that evolves into this particular new potential bicycle that can go to even four higher peaks but it's at d that other things can happen why do i make a big deal look there it went to a d in the dow back in december went sideways squeaked to a slightly higher peak that became e pulls back and then there's really no other way i can count this but to say that was a peak a that's a peak b that's a peak c at an all-time high of 38.783 and now at any point from this very second that we're talking, it could fail. That will become a peak C1, C2 because it is so close. But I'm anticipating that it's just – we'll make a nominal high. And in this particular look at millenn millenniums, that is 1,000 levels, this particular one going to 39,000, I suspect in the 38,900s, it's going to be very strong resistance. That is not going to just be clear sailing into the 39,000s. Okay, that's just my interpretation. Let's go to the S&P. And in this particular instance, S&P is trading at <clears throat> uh, 49.94.84, down uh, 30, 30 or 40 cents. Made a new uh, all-time high yesterday at 4. Nine, I think it was uh, nine nine point. Yep, <laughs> just missed it. Four nine nine point eight nine. Let me just type that in. So that becomes a mystery thing, and people say, "Oh, the five thousand level." Yes, it is important, but it's more a psychological thing. It has nothing to do with the chart. The chart has to be analyzed 
on, uh, what did I say, 77, I'll call it 77, and then go back and check. Um, what's really important for me is that we've already got to a D in the monthly chart of the S&P. That negates that previous peak B, the all-time high of 48.18.62 in January of 2022. This is the new count. It's in a leg D. And because it's made a new high in February, this is a continuation. You cannot make a peak D until all of March is concluded without making a higher high above the February high. Um, but it's only a leg B in the weekly chart. That is really powerful. And that basically says you could pull back to this whole area, this consolidation area in the 4740s. That's, that's over 200 points below. That's over 2,000 points in the Dow. You could do that and still be in a very strong buy mode. So all I'm saying is that on a shorter term basis, I'm anticipating we're getting really close to something that just says, hey, be, be real careful here. Uh, the market is starting to take economic news as bad news. At this point, it's ignoring it. It's ignoring, look, it's ignoring the dollar, which has had a really nice move to the upside. <clears throat> look, it's holding quite well. It's up today, 27 ticks at 104.33. It's ignoring the TBT, which is the inverse of bonds. The TLT is the Lehman 20-year Treasury bond fund. This is the ultra short Lehman 20-year uh, T-bond ETF, even though Lehman is not in existence anymore. But the TBT has had a very nice winter peak, D, the fourth highest peak. It's pulled back, holding quite nicely. Not great, but it just says yields are holding to the higher level. Let's go to the T and X, dot X. Probably almost the same. Yep, it's the same pattern. It went a little higher because it went to peak C1, C2. That acts like a D. You had a peak C3. And this could even be a C4. So this says if there is a move in bonds, it goes at this point, 41.56 is the 10-year Treasury note. Uh, that's the the yield. If that goes from 41.54, 4.154, 4. if it goes into the 42.3 area or higher, oh, I think that's going to be impactful to the market. So we'll see what economic news comes out tomorrow. That maybe it'll impact it. So let's go back. We were looking at the S&P. And what I, I just wanted to do the dollar because I didn't finish that thought, which was we're only in leg C in the dollar monthly chart. In the dollar, I meant the Dow, the Dow monthly chart at an all-time high. Um, what this basically says is that whatever the high is in February, if all of March has no, by one penny, doesn't ex exceed the, SM, the, uh, the Dow's February high, that means it continues to exceed if it does that, but if it doesn't, it means it's a peak C. But then you have to wait all of the month and then the next month for a possible leg D. That takes you into um, the, probably the second, qu second quarter of 2024 before you can even make that peak D. So, so far, that's very bullish. This is the 14th week. If it goes to 38,783 points, 62 was the high. If it goes to 0.63, that will by tomorrow at 4 o'clock, that extends for the 40s. Amazing. I'll be right back. Now, now, right back. Now, If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, Basil Shop. We're back, and I just I am lost if I can look at the uh, uh, short time frame e, uh, e mini chart. But just the one minute, it went to a peak E at about 9:30, just after the market opened. It was actually at a D, and then it had a quick pop to the upside. Pulls back way to the 200 period exponential moving average, and then it has a peak A, B, C, and it goes to a double top at peak D. Pulls back, holds the 200 period moving average, still trying to bounce off it. And the 10 minute chart at a peak D hasn't given any sell signal or anything yet, so at a peak D. So that's how relevant and, and pertinent those Ds are. Whoops, I wanted to go to. Um, so uh, within that context, I said I would just finish up uh, the. Um, different indices and the reason why I'm just a little cautious here we are we are short um, they are short the Dow actually um, we have a long-term long positions but this is just a trading position we were short the SMH has just got stopped out um, this is just a, 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 for near-term traders um, I'm suspecting let me just do that right now since I mentioned it, that the SMHs are getting really close to some kind of a di uh, just a divergence between uh, the technicals, which are just starting to weaken a little bit, and the price of individual stocks. And I've been talking about these round numbers over and over and over. So let's just see, uh, because NVIDIA is part of the QQQ. Uh, let's just look at uh, NVIDIA. Look, a little doji candle possibly forming today. I had a high of 707.94. It's had a whole bunch of round numbers. Been talking about that for a while now. Uh, I'm just going to be watching this carefully. And then a stock that for subscribers ages ago, I said, wow, this can be the stock that's like VMware once upon a time where we um, soon after the IPO, we were in it. We had some really good gains for subscribers, about 100 points up. Twice, I think, and 100 points when we shorted to the downside and they haven't touched it for years. But I said ARM could turn out to be something like that and we never got in. So let's just see. And then it came out. I heard uh, yesterday I was in the car. I heard ARM earnings was absolutely spectacular. When I got back and I checked the, uh, the charts, this is unbelievable. It was an IPO. It kind of fails from the 60s. It went down to 46.50 and then one, two, three. Four months later, what does it do? It has a high today of 126.58, up 54%, almost doubled, um, well, more than that, 
uh, it's at up 42 at 119.40. And I thought, okay, let's watch it for the end of the day. Maybe by the end of the day, it'll have a round number. I can't see it right here. What is this? Oh, let me check. I'm looking for round numbers. I'm probably at the high or the close. It's open. Oh, the low today, round number 94. I, I just, I can't tell you how many times we've seen that. I, at this point, because it's the most number of round numbers that I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that even when I was looking at tops in the home builders back in 2007, 2008. I don't remember seeing anything like this. This just tells me that in, a, in, a, in about two months' time, we'll be looking at this and we'll say, oh, that's what those round numbers were telling us. Those are, that's the ceiling now because they are going to have a huge digestive phase. It doesn't have to be a smash, but I suspect the semis are going to have a pretty decent pullback at some point. Uh, let me just see. So we've got uh, NVIDIA. I did ARM. This is ARM Holdings. Uh, the other one was SC. MI is another way, SMCI, SSMCI, Supermicro. Yep, there it goes. Uh, 693 all time high. It has 686 all time high yesterday, I believe. And today, what is it? 693. I'm sorry. There's some, there's a, his, this is what I call hysteria. Um, when fund managers I, this is not local people just doing it. This is, I believe it has to be uh, fund managers because they are saying, get me out. It opens at 670.76, spikes 23 points high exactly to the penny, 00693.00, open at 666.05, and I think it had a 606 round number high previously. These round numbers are just telling me that fund managers are saying, i got to get out. That's the number. I'm out. And that's, that's why it shows up as a round number. But they can be obliterated within minutes. You can go higher than that. But the number of them just says to me, we're looking at a phenomenon here that uh, there's no, for me, there's no other way to look at it other than there's a certain degree of hysteria of getting in. I've missed it. I've missed it. I've got to get in. They get in. It's a round number or they're getting out. But the fact that this action is happening, let's see what Disney is. All over the show, but especially in the semis, Disney had is trading at 109.32. Another stock that I like a lot. Never had subscribers in it. And look at this, a very big move. Um, up leg D in the daily chart. Leg C in the weekly, that's still very positive. Uh, but we'll see. So yesterday it had uh, no round numbers. So it's trading toodle, toodle, toodle in the 96s. Today it opens at 106. Uh, it opens at 107.08. Hits 109.50. It's trading right now at almost the high of the day, 109.50. Okay, we'll see what happens next. All right, let's get back to our story. So the QQQ, the way I'm looking at it, suggests that there's some kind of action. Hey, with a market like this, this could turn out to be just... Uh, high-level consolidation, and we're ready for the next big break to the upside. But the technicals are suggesting to me that on the short term, not the weekly charts, they're still fabulous, but the weekly charts are just suggest, suggesting they could have a pullback, but they're still going to see higher highs. It's the daily charts that got me a little worried. doesn't mean to say it could smash, but at least the sideways consolidation of time. All right, let's go to the IWM, which was doing better than the others. It's up $1.30. dollar thirty. But it's not great. The nine feet moving hasn't crossed positive yet. So at 194.55, it's still quite a bit below the 205.49 high of December the 27th of this last year. Let's go to the XLK quickly. I got questions I want to get to. XLK, that's a gray A. So I'm anticipating there's a chance, just a chance, that the high that was made, um, the all time high that was made on the 25th of January of 206.15, uh, we go one penny above there to get to a D uh, in the next day or two, or we could even stall over here. But it says, look, the technicals are starting to weaken. The on-bounce volume is very 
strong. The nine is way over the 14. I don't want to fight with that, but I am saying we're getting close. So now I want to go to, let me finish this. So gold, uh, gold is uh, down eight to 2044, just stuck in a range. Silver was acting quite weak. And silver today is uh, trying to rally and it's now up, up only 0.05 at 2241. High grade copper had a lousy session yesterday and a horrible session today. This is just telling you, you've got to be careful here. Wood, this is, I always put them together. Wood is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry because uh, we always look at copper as international for business. Um, it's holding quite well, 75.52. Uh, down 0.07, right on the 200 period moving average, but that is quite a small from the 82s to the 73s. I'll be right back. The Dow is trading right now at down 31 at 38,625. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I go to the bank, it's just down, it's down. Um, yep. So, um, and right now, let me do this. I just wanted to finish with the bonds, just to say that the bonds coming down very sharply, um, or oh, even sharper now, down um, a point. And yeah, that, that's a big move for bonds. All right, and then just crude oil, a little bounce. Uh, this is still... <clears throat> 
actually, it might try for the 200 period moving average of 70, uh, 78, no, sorry, 76.82. <clears throat> so it's 75.51 right now. I think I've covered all those things. Okay, so the question came in about Bank of America. Bank of America trading down 9 cents at 33.09. And usually when the yields go up, it really helps the banks, but it hasn't helped the Bank of America. Uh, we are long Bank of America from lower down. It's holding okay. It's just not looking too great. It's got a PD in the weekly chart. And that just says, monitors closely because the technicals are still quite good. Uh, the 9 is way over the 14. That's good. The price is above the 200 period moving average weekly. Uh, level of 32, 32.09. Um, monthly chart is just okay. But if you look at, say, a JP Morgan, JP Morgan has been superb. It's made um, an all time high a few, about a week and a half ago. Uh, 117.96 was the high in October 2021. Uh, this one went to, and this is the fascination between what I was talking about this left side. Big pullback, like a V or a cup formation. They're going all the way back. It could take days, it could take weeks, months, or even in this case, almost two years. And it got back. And where did it get back to? It got back to one. You remember 172.06 is the number we're looking at. It gets to 176.31 on the 12th of January. And then one on the 31st, it gets to 170. 8.30, slightly higher. So, yes, it's making higher highs, but in the meantime, what we're looking at is that weekly chart in leg B. That's a good sign, and that goes together with the XLF. So, specifically, Bank of America is lagging. Um, the uh, XLF has not gone to its all-time high of 41.70. This is the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. Uh, but it's holding very well. It's doing okay. So it's it's actually bank-specific in this case because Bank of America did okay. And everything about it, everything about it said that the previous high, 34.69 back in early January, and then the retest of 35, what was that? 35.10 with a round number low of 34. Chapman wave reverse in, uh, uh, red, inverse uh, Roman candle. And then it's been down, down since then. And uh, that just says to me, this is not acting that well. It's really not acting poorly, but just in relationship to what the market's doing. Uh, it had a fabulous move up from the 25 area all the way to 35 for bank stock, that's a good percentage move, and now it's just kind of stalled. So the question is, what next? I would just say the 50 period moving average support, it, if it actually gets there, that's not good. It's at 32, 38. Why? Because it's making lower lows and lower highs, and then this is an acceleration down. I don't like that. I would like for it to hold steady and have at least an attempt to get to 33, 60. It doesn't sound like much as a 33.07 right now, down 11 cents. Yeah, so um, I, the question was, for some people who didn't get into this, where would I add? And I'm just saying, I'm not ready to add to Bank of America just yet. At this particular point, it needs a little bit. If it didn't pull back so sharp, if it held 34 and was trading at 34.10, Right now, so oh, I'm expecting that it does go to another leg D. This could be an alternate count, um, but I, I can't do that because officially in the Chapman wave, that was a new buy mode, A, B, C, D, E. Um, and that just says, uh, you've taken out that low. This should be a brand new low, the one that was on the <clears throat> right here. Uh, that was January the 18th. Nope. January the 17th at 31.27. So I'm saying have a little patience. If this is your Now, if you have not get into any bank stock at this particular point, I, I would say, because we're a little bit lower down, so we've got a cushion, I wouldn't want to start a new position here. I'd much rather go for, I don't know, it's a $33 stock and we're looking at stocks in the, in, the, you know, in the hundreds. But let me just do this. Uh, bank of America... Let's look what City's done. City's trading at 54.04. Uh, they had this big spike to this. It's kind of what the uh, Bank of America did. I have to call this F slash C. It has all the characteristics so far as more like an F than an A. Absolutely. 
um, in the, and that went to a D already in the weekly chart if it doesn't make a new higher high this month, uh, sorry, this week, which looks almost impossible uh, to get to the 57th. It's trading at 54.05 right now. I don't know when they have earnings or anything like that. Oh, could still do it, maybe. <clears throat> Um, this is a slightly different, a, a different um, pattern, and it's a little bit more positive. So let me think about it. Maybe tomorrow I'll come back to it and we can see whether or not to add to Bank of America or whether you should, if you're looking at a bank stock, to go somewhere else. I just want you to look at KRE. This is the regional bank sector index. KRE, look how bad that is. This is, you know, this is such a mixed market. You've got the semiconductors, all-time high. You've got PAVE, and even now the semis are going a little higher. PAVE, um, and PAVE is the uh, Global X U.S. Infrastructure Development ETF at an all-time high. A, B, C, D, this is a brand new A, B, C, D in the daily. Let me just do that for you so that you can see how the technique works. Beautiful cup formation. This is what I meant about taking out that left side high. This decisively took it out. That's really important. That's really good. So this is a trading at 36.70, up six cents today. There's your A. There's your B. So all your obligation is in the chat, maybe it's to notate it. It's when you get to D that it comes a little bit harder um, uh, because there are alternative choices. And in the in the um, in the monthly charts and links in the weekly charts, they see in the monthly chart, I believe. That that's already gone. Click that on right there. Yeah, this is leg D. So, um, yeah, and you know, you look at uh, Caterpillar. This is part of the infrastructure. Caterpillar made a high of 334.87 the other day. Uh, it's trading right now at 323.05. I was looking for round numbers here. I didn't find them. Um, so, okay. So, in the meantime, I'm going to say just hold tight. Don't do anything with Bank of America. Next thing is uh, Cleveland Cliffs. Oh, no, let me – I'll do this, but I mustn't forget yesterday. I did not see – I've had a little trouble with these different computers since I'm out of town um, doing this remotely, picking up all my emails. But I'll do that. So Cleveland Cliffs is not acting well. Remember, this is a B, but there's no guarantee that it has to go to a C and a D. You've already made a P, E major top in the daily charge, a P, D in the weekly chart. Right here. Um, and that was on J um, December the 19th at 21.41. So this could actually fail. Um, yeah, I'll talk about when we return and then I'll look at BYDDF. This is a uh, Chinese EV company, Byte company. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. I had a question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just set that in the wrong place, I guess. Let me give it over here. There we go. CLF Cleveland Cliffs Trading. So this is the uh, a steel company, Cleveland Cliffs Rolls Steel. Where is it? Yep, Rolls Steel. Uh, come back. There we go. Now, this is, this is very interesting because it, it's not acting that well. So I'm just going to suggest if you're looking at an intermediate term play, we're going to have to get through this daily, the short term first. And the short term is suggesting that at 19.26, it could retest the 18s. You've seen how many charts have we seen with these big spikes and the big pullback. So I I would definitely lighten up if you're long. I would take something off. You can always add it back if it starts to reverse towards the upside. At this particular point, please protect yourself. Um, why? Because the stocks that have not participated at this particular point <clears throat> and that if the market does start to, to just consolidate over the next uh, week and a half going into, say, the third week of uh, even the fourth week of February, <clears throat> uh, you've got to watch these because SLX, which is the steel ETF, it's trying to hold steady. It's trying to make an H pattern and take off from the bottom. But it's really struggling. If you look at the weekly chart, um, it says until at 69.38, down 48 cents. Until it can really start to hold in the 71.30 or higher area, this is kind of stuck in a rectangle. H goes to a lowercase M pattern. And then we just go to STLD. I know when Jacob Shoop talks about it. Uh, it's done very nicely. It's in a leg D at this particular point, but underneath the previous high in the 128 area. So here we are at 125. Uh, I'm looking, yeah. So here again, it's almost like I, I'm looking at so many different different sectors and stocks within the sectors, and some of them are, are not acting as well as the leadership. This one is in the middle, not quite a leader, but acting very well. So still Dynamics, SDLD, trading down 64 cents, is acting a lot better. So this is what you would like to see in CLF. Look, you see this big arch formation to the upside, and each time it wants to pull, there's a cup. Within the cup on the right side of the ellipse to the right, they call it the, this is the coro, the quarter of the panel of a, of a semi-circle. Um, and it's gone to a leg D, and each time it pulls back, it holds the 14 period moving average and then springs higher. But you didn't get that. So Cleveland Cliffs is not acting as well as the others. I'm just going to say, be a little. And it's took a new core, N U E. Uh, <clears throat> this is actually, this is, this is probably the leadership right here. New core corporation, N U E, different price range, of course, to Cleveland Cliffs at 185.35, uh, down 85 cents. This is acting much, much better. It's holding the support levels. Okay, so with that said, let's go to the next question. Was ENVX, ENVX. This is interface, interface, interface. Interface, e, no, E, 
Oh, ENPH. ENPH. Oh, this is acting quite well in NFX. This is end phase. Uh, in phase energy, they do batteries. They do, I think they have natural gas, they have all sorts of things. Big spike yesterday. Uh, this is what I also heard on the news as I was driving along. I suddenly hear something about in phase. Oh, poor old in phase was once in the uh, 300s. Yep, 339.92 was in December, 22 high. And it had a little bit of a pullback to the 70s and now it's trading at 118.58. So this is going to be a gray A. Why? I don't have any evidence yet that this is really the start of a big move to the upside. Um, but it is holding well. And it hasn't made a new uh, recovery high after yesterday's big spike to the upside. It needs to do that to say it wasn't a one-off, just a news event. And if you look at the weekly chart, yeah, that looks good right now. But the overall pattern is not that great. So if it doesn't, at 118, if it doesn't pull back to the 100. And 12 level, no, I must go to the exact number. The low yesterday of that big spike was 114.70. If it closes under 113 any day in the next week, that's just not good action at all. They have to restart a whole new energizing to the upside. Let's just look at natural gas while I'll be doing that. Natural gas is, oh, uh, don't even look at natural gas. Made a PD um, in the daily chart back in January, up in the 2.06 area, and here it is 1.9 and looking horrible. Gee, poor old natural gas. So let's just go back to end phase, and I'll just give you the numbers. The numbers are that if it, if it, if in the next today's Thursday, going into Wednesday of next week, if it is, I don't care whether it just nicks it or not, as long as it nicks the. 124.10 was the high. As long as it nicks 124.20, just to say, look, I, I'm actually getting to the 124s. It doesn't have to hold there. It just has to nick it, and in that same breath, in other words, that same thing, it cannot take out the low of yesterday of 114.70. That'll say, good, high-level consolidation. It could now start to move at least for another week or two towards the upside before it does some backing and filling. But if it closes under that 114, I'm going to say 113 level, it just says you're going to have to wait a little longer. All right, next question came in. No, oh, that was um, BYD, BYDDF. So this is Bid BYD Company Limited, H shares, Chinese EV. Look at that H pattern in the monthly chart. Look at the H pattern in the uh, – that's failed already in the weekly chart. And look at this. It went uh, toodle, toodle, toodle back in 2023. It's up in the 36s. Now it's in the 22s. Um, it's actually right now 23.53. Uh, that low that was made on the 31st of January, <clears throat> that's the low to monitor. Because you remember we were speaking about the EVs, and I said, you know, out of the automobile companies, and I mentioned this a long time ago, I said, Toyota – TM is the one that's doing the best. Now, what does that? What does it do? Two or two round number, two and a half, three weeks ago, couldn't get out of its own way. And then all of a sudden, it goes to two or three, and yesterday it spiked higher. Today's high is two twenty-five point fifty-five. That's what you want to see in end phase. You don't want to see it stall after the big gap up. We're going to see what Disney does. We'll go there in a moment. But look, you want to continue higher. What it's done is Toyota Motors has raised its base to, first of all, the low of yesterday, which was 211.82. Uh, and legs C in the weekly. But if you look at BYDDF, I, I personally, I wouldn't touch any Chinese stock at this particular point. Most of the time I say, you've got enough to worry about here let alone worry about something else in another country. So I'm just saying that this BYDDF is not acting very well at all. <clears throat> it tells us about the – and this is money being thrown at it, and it's the lead EV company in China, I believe. Um, so that's all. Okay, finish with that. Next question was symbiotic. So for Charlie, Charlie, if you're listening – now I can say to you, remember I said I have to see how it acts within the next three days. So yesterday it took out the gap down low of uh, 37.28. It went to 37.22. Uh, Today's at 
41.15. I'll talk about it in a moment, but I know that she wants it more in intermediate gym position, but at a very short gym position, I'll tell you exactly what to look for. I'll be right back. That's a chat. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Forget you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. Let me give you this a simple example. Charlie, because it's holding quite well, it hasn't really dived lower. 
if you want, why not start a very small position at 41.42 in SYM just to get a feel for it? And you'd probably have to, I, I'd give it, oh, it moves so quickly. I'd have to just initially give it two points. But if you've got two points and then it goes from 42.98 right now to 43.50, tighten that up. Uh, but to maybe even one point. <clears throat> and just as a feeler position, because that was a huge move from 51s down to the 37s. So just as a feeler. Okay, next thing is ANAT. Look at this. Talk about round numbers. ANAT, fantastic move up 10 at 277.60. It had a round number low today of 260. Now, the sneakers that are just grabbing the low and they're going to get out as it moves higher. So this is now very short-term moves uh, that we've got to monitor carefully. I want to see whether or not we close at, uh, towards the low of the day in the Dow today. That's going to be important. Have a wonderful day. day. Stay tuned for Steve. I believe Larry is finally back. Great. And have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. Check out my opening call.